morning. This is Robert Carl Sabstein bringing you this morning's market update. US indices suffered a shocking week last week and are expected to be hard set for positive gains this week with prospects for a strong start to earnings seasons dimming and worries about slow growth in China continuing to hang over the markets. The US 500 closed on Friday down 23 points at 1920 spot 88. The US Tech 100 dropped 30 points to close on Friday at 4,273 spot 13 and the Wall Street declined 198 points to close the week on 16,328. Wall Street banks are poised to unveil another batch of lackluster profits after the run-up to the Federal Reserve's historic interest rate rise failed to boost their crucial trading businesses. Results to be presented over the next week and a half are expected to show the big five U.S. investment banks generated even less revenue from trading in the last three months of the year than in the troublesome third quarter. Looking to commodities, gold dropped $5 to close on 1,104 spot $5 on Friday and Brent crude lost $0.66 cents to close on $33.35 a barrel. Investors, hoping a Saudi Arabian oil co. IPO will provide a chance to buy a stake in the world's largest crude producer, may have to wait. Saudi Aramco, as, Saudi Aramco, as the state-owned oil monopoly is known, confirmed on Friday it was studying options for a share sale. While one route is a full initial public offering, another is listing of a bundle of refining subsidiaries, it said in a statement. That suggests Aramco may seek a path to IPO that allows the state to retain full control of its crown jewels, the fields that produce more than 10 million barrels a day and make it the world's largest exporter. The kingdom owns either directly or through joint ventures plants capable of processing 5.3 million barrels a day in Saudi Arabia, the US, South Korea, Japan and China. Of that, Aramco directly controls 3.1 million barrels a day based on its direct ownership. The Saudi company is the world's fourth largest refiner behind Exxon Mobil Corp, Royal Dutch Shell and China Petroleum and Chemical Corp, or Sinopec, according to US-based consultants Petro Strategies. In Europe, the Germany 30 continued its downward decline on, uh, on the last day of trading, falling 90 points to close on 9,748 spot 4 on Friday, while the UK 100 shed 14 points to close on 5,890 spot 6. Following the year of the Grexit, early this year attention will be set on the UK and any fears of a Brexit. Prime Minister David Cameron said he is aiming to reach a deal on the UK's membership in the European Union next month, paving the way for a national vote on whether to withdraw from the bloc soon after. I'm hopeful of a deal in February, and if we do that, we could go on and hold the referendum Cameron has told the BBC in Andrew Marr's show on Sunday. The prize is closer than it was, and I'm going to work around the clock to get that done. Having pledged to hold, on, hold an in or out vote on so-called Brexit by the end of September or late, later if negotiations falter. The British government wants the EU to cut its bureaucracy and trade barriers, to differentiate between rules for countries inside and outside the euro area, and to limit benefits for immigrants. Cameron said he is willing to wait for the right terms. To me, the substance matters much more than the timing, he said. If I can't get the right deal in February, I'll wait and I'll keep going. In today's corporate news, Krauss Mafia, a German machinery supplier, has been purchased by a China-led consortium. And Standard Life's David Cummings has reiterated that the company will vote against the proposed purchase by Shell of BG Group. Today's economic data in focus at 9.30 in Europe, Centix Investor Confidence was released for January. And in the US at 3 p.m., Labor Market Conditions Index are released for December. And at 5.40, the Fed's Lockhart will speak. That's all for this morning's market update. Thank you and goodbye.